Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Sesame Seer Tuna and Sushi Bar Spinach. That's right, this video is dedicated to the other side of the sushi bar menu, where after you work your way through the niguri and sushi rolls, you discover things like tuna tataki and cold Japanese-style spinach salad, or gomai ayat, as I think it's supposed to be pronounced. And while I can't promise true authenticity, I can promise this is pretty fast and simple to make. And I think extremely delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by wilting some spinach for our salad. And what I have here is a half a pound of baby spinach. And do not under any circumstances remove the stems. Right, those are considered a very important part of the dish. And what we'll do is transfer that spinach into a nice large dry pot set over medium high heat. And by dry, I don't mean not wet. I just mean we don't need any butter or oil. And all we're going to do once that's in is simply toss it until it just barely wilts which is only going to take a minute or two, so don't go anywhere. Just keep a toss and a stir in until your spinach eventually looks like this. Okay, it's just barely wilted, but we don't have a bunch of water running out of it. And as soon as we reach that point, we will quickly transfer that into a strainer, and we will simply set that aside and let it cool down to room temp before we squeeze out any excess liquid. And while we're waiting for that to cool, we can move on to make our dressing which is going to start by toasting some white sesame seeds over medium heat, again in a dry pan. And how much you toast these is going to depend on how strong and nutty you want your sesame flavor. All right, I usually like to do mine until I can smell toasted sesame, and the seeds just start to take on a little golden color. But many cooks go much further, until they're actually golden brown. But I'm always scared to go too far. So as soon as mine just start to take on some color, and I can smell that beautiful toasted sesame aroma, I'll go ahead and pull them off and transfer those into my mortar, where I'm going to crush and grind them about halfway, by which I mean about half the seeds will be crushed and half will still be whole. And just like it's personal preference how long to toast your sesame seeds, same goes for how severely to grind these. Okay, some people just like to barely bruise them, whereas others will smash and grind this into pretty much a paste. But once those are ground, we'll go ahead and finish our dressing with some sugar, some soy sauce, and then a little something called mirin which is a type of a sweet Japanese cooking wine, which is usually sold these days right next to the soy sauce. But if you can't get it, don't worry. A lot of recipes just call for the soy sauce and the sugar. And that's it, we'll go ahead and mix that up with a spoon. And in my case, a freakishly small wooden spoon, since we're not supposed to use metal spoons in our mortars. And that's it, our super simple dressing is done. And by now, hopefully our spinach is cool enough to handle. And by handle it, I mean we'll transfer it onto some paper towels. And we will gather it up and we will squeeze out as much of that excess liquid as possible. Oh, and by the way, this is probably a lot easier if you use a cloth kitchen towel. All right, not only will you help save a few trees, but you'll be able to squeeze a lot harder without it tearing, like these paper towels did. So please do as I say, not as I did. But regardless, once that squeeze dry, we will gather it up and give it exactly six chops. All right, three chops this away, and then three chops that away. At which point we can transfer that into a mixing bowl and we can toss in our toasted sesame dressing and we'll go ahead and give that a thorough mixing. And believe it or not, that's it. Yes, it really is this simple. Oh, and I should mention, some people do like to add a little bit of toasted sesame oil to this, which I'm not going to, but I did want to mention for your future adventures with this. And then once this is mixed, we can give it a taste and maybe adjust the sweetness and soy content if we want. But we're going to serve this ice cold, so generally I don't like to adjust until it's to that temperature. So what we'll do is go ahead and wrap that up and pop it in the fridge. And then we'll give it a taste and adjust later when it's really, really cold. And then before we get to searing our tuna, I'm going to mix up one optional component, which would be a very simple miso mayonnaise. And for that we will add some white miso to some mayo. And I know it's not white, it's gold. But the white actually refers to the rice content, not the color. And then we'll also add a small splash of rice vinegar. And we'll go ahead and give this a mix. Which would have been like a hundred times easier if I had mashed my miso with the vinegar and smoothed that out and then mixed it with the mayo. But anyway, all's well that ends well. And while this condiment is optional, our seared tuna is extremely lean and our spinach salad has no oil. So I think this is nice for adding a little bit of fat and richness. And that's it. We'll just keep that in the fridge until needed. And we can move on to sesame searing our tuna. And for this, we'll need some thick cut, beautiful sushi grade ahi tuna. And what we'll do is very lightly salt that on both sides. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is coat the surfaces with as many sesame seeds as we want. 
And while the white sesame seeds will totally work, since we use those in our spinach salad, I decided to go with black sesame seeds for the tuna, which I think taste the same, but to me looks so much cooler. But anyway, either will work, so you decide. I mean, you are, for all the David Lee Roth, of whether your seared tuna looks goth, but no matter which one you decide to use, I think we want a pretty generous coating. But again, that's up to you, and it's okay if you just want a few. And by the way, I'm not afraid to admit I bought this frozen and thawed it, which is absolutely fine. And I don't think people realize that almost all the sushi you eat out at restaurants has been previously frozen. But frozen or fresh, we're going to need something very high grade and free from any connective tissue. And that's it. Once those have been sesame seeded, we can head to the stove where I'm going to transfer those into a lightly oiled nonstick pan set over medium heat. And this would be the perfect time to remind you that we're not cooking these. We're only searing them. As in like maybe only 30 seconds per side. And then besides obviously doing the two big flat sides, we are also going to want to go around and sear the edges. And if they sit flat and stay in one place, that's great. Otherwise, you might have to lean it against the edge of the pan, or just simply hold it in your tongs. And that's it. Once we think every one of those surfaces has been seared for about 30 to 45 seconds, we'll go ahead and remove those from the heat, and then make a decision. Okay, we can go ahead and slice this and serve it right now, or we can transfer this into the fridge and chill it completely. But I was starving, so I'm going to go ahead and slice one portion up. And we'll serve that alongside a portion of our spinach salad. And I like to do relatively thick cuts on this. But if you're going to use chopsticks and want those bites to be a little more manageable, you might want to go a little bit thinner. And right here you can see what I think is the perfect sear on a piece of ahi tuna. All right, barely an eighth of an inch is cooked all the way around. And the inside remains perfectly raw and gorgeously colored. So beautiful. Oh, and if you're wondering why my portion of spinach salad's in a ramekin, that is just to mold it into a little bit of a neater shape when we transfer it on the plate, as you're just about to see. So once our tuna's sliced, we'll go ahead and place our spinach on the plate. Oh, and a little tip if it's not coming out easily, do not bang that ramekin on the plate. Okay, just give it a few taps on an open hand instead, and then once it's loosened, you can transfer it on. And as you can see, we've also put a nice generous swipe of that miso mayonnaise on the plate over which we will place our beautifully sliced tuna tataki. And then, if you can find it, I love to finish this with a very light brushing of ponzu sauce, which kind of looks like a very light soy sauce, and there is some soy sauce in it, but it's actually flavored with a type of citrus called yuzu, and I think a little bit of that fragrant, fruity acidity makes a really nice final touch here. Not to mention gives our tuna a beautiful glistening effect. And that's it, we'll finish up with a shake of sesame seeds, and we are ready to serve which I really should be doing with chopsticks. But Michelle and I just moved, and we're still sort of living out of boxes, and we couldn't find them anywhere. But that's okay. I'm actually going to be able to eat this faster with a fork and knife, which works for me, since this truly is amazing. All right, those simple, clean flavors of the seared tuna, with that little bit of fermented richness from the miso mayo. All right, that is a great bite just on its own. But when you chase it with that slightly sweet, slightly salty, slightly nutty spinach salad, it really is a magnificent combination. And while all the components would be great eaten separately, for me, I think this shines the brightest when all three components are combined together. Oh yeah, that's the money bite. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling sesame seared tuna and sushi bar spinach. As you saw, so simple, so easy, relatively fast, and I think absolutely beautiful. Not to mention, you can make all these components ahead of time and then put it all together in just a few minutes when you're ready to serve. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.